everyone. I am Pragya Shivasto. I am here to record a lecture on VLSI technology. The course code is KEC053 and presently we are discussing its unit 5. This is the first lecture on unit 5 which is metallization and packaging of VLSI devices. So, here we have seen the flow of the course and we have discussed this in starting lectures as well. Uh, as, far as, as far as IC fabrication is concerned, we start from the very step, very first step which is the preparation of wafer. So, we can start with this. The preparation of wafer is nothing but the first step here. So, preparation of wafer is the first step. Next is, okay, there are certain intermediate steps like wafer cleaning and uh, those wet cleaning, dry cleaning. We are not going into that detail. Then the second step is epitaxy. So, second step is epitaxy. The third is oxidation, adding a layer of SiO2. Then we had lithography. Using this lithography, we had very well created slots in the wafer where we need to add certain kind of uh, well where we can where we need to create a well or selectively we want to remove silicon dioxide so we have certain dedicated space in the wafer next is the polysilicon uh, next is the we can have a layer of uh, dielectric or polysilicon film deposition so next step is nothing but deposition the, using this deposition we have a layer of polysilicon on the top of the wafer Next is when we want to create certain uh, nodes like we want to create N well within P, P substrate or P well within N substrate, then you want to increase the conductivity. So, either this or this. So, either of them. This is the sixth step. We can use either of them. Next is now we have the N well. Now we have we want the terminals like the terminals means let us say we are talking about a transistor. So, we need a terminal that can be named as source, drain, gate or here is these terminals. So, let us say this is source, this is drain and this is gate. So, this metal contact which will help us in getting these metal con in, this, in getting these connections will come from metallization. So, this is the seventh step where we get the metallization, where we do the metallization and uh, at the end when we land up doing all these steps, the last step is packaging of VLSI devices. So, in my next lectures, maybe uh, the very next lecture or next to next lecture, we will start what is packaging of VLSI devices. Packaging of VLSI devices will help us in learning how uh, we pack a delicate and nano scale, nano level IC and those delicate legs where a small and small IC would have 40 legs, 120 legs. So, how the packaging helps in getting the efficiency. So, next is to start with, we will start with, uh, to start with, we, uh, we will uh, do the study in metallization, deposition and epitaxy. So, we have to see what is metallization here, deposition here and epitaxy here. And here we can see that metallization is a process by which the component of IC are interconnected by aluminum conductor. So, component of IC means different chunks, different components, different uh, portions of the ICs are connected using that metal and that can be aluminum conductor. Next is the process produces a thin uh, metal layer that will serve as required conductor pattern for interconnection of various components in the chip. So, what are actually happening? We, we need certain interconnections. So, what is the which one is the most common metal here? Answer to this question is aluminum. So, aluminum is the most commonly used material for metallization in most of the ICs, uh, diodes, discrete ICs and the transistors. The active metals in integrated circuits are connected by patterned wiring. Uh, this wiring consists of layers of metals and polysilicon separated by insulators which are usually the deposited oxides. 
So this is how a uh, metallization is needed in this industry, why metallization is needed in this industry. I hope I have answered the question. Next, what is actually the process? So when we are uh, metallize, when we are introducing this metallization process, we are actually making some deposition. We are actually depositing uh, some aluminum. So a layer of oxide is grown or deposited over the entire wafer and then a photo etching process removes the oxide from the areas desired for metallization contact. A thin film of metal is then applied and the metal is etched off. The remaining metal is etched off. Let us see, let us have that this is a uh, wafer where uh, there is a spot A. Let us call this a spot A. Let us say this is a spot A where we need the metallization to occur. So, what we will do? We will coat a layer of oxide throughout it and then when we will coat a layer of oxide on that, a photo etching process, we will remove the uh, oxide using the photo etching means photolithography only from the selected region. So, what will happen here is using this photo etching process remaining portion will be removed and only there will be a layer of oxide in the remaining portions. Now, when you add metal here, now if I pour metal here, uh, let us use some different color here. Now, when I am adding metal here, this metal is poured onto the entire surface, okay. This metal is poured. We need metal contact only in this region. So, this complete will be removed. This portion will get removed. This portion will get removed. So, the equivalent circuit will be only this portion will have a metal contact. The remaining portion you can remove. The unwanted metal is removed. Here we can see this. So, this is the metal here. We will having a contact here. So, this is what metallization process is. Properties of metallization? Of course, metallization will be a metal contact like aluminum contact. So, it is used for conduction. We need high conductivity in that particular area. So, if we need a portion of high conductivity, it is very much clear that we need low resistivity. So, low resistivity. Next is easy to form, easy to etch for pattern generation means if we are not able to remove this unwanted metal, if you are not able to remove this unwanted metal, what will I do? I do not want metal entire IC. I do not want this metal to destroy and to be there all over the IC surface. I only want it like this, only in this specific region. So, it should have a property that you can very well and very easily etch it to have certain specific pattern. So, easy to etch for specific pattern. Should be stable in oxidizing ambient and uh, metal stability, good adherence, low stress, surface smoothness. See, the environment in which we work, so it should be, you know, uh, not, not reactive and it should be stable against the environmental uh, and, and environmental and, uh, conditions which we have, which, we, which are prevailing around. So, it should be stable against oxidizing ambient. There should be uh, good mechanical stability. Good adherence means it should stick to the walls of the IC very strongly and uh, stable throughout processing including high temperature center, dry and wet oxidation, phosphorus glass passivation metallization. It should not, uh, it should, there should be no reaction with metal. It should not contaminate the device, wafer or working apparatus. So, these are the properties of uh, metals which we are going to use. Now, merits of metallization, what are the advantages? Of course, 
it will impart good conductivity to produce metallized uh, areas for the bonding of wire leads from packaging to the chip and from good mechanical bonds again what is the limitation of metallization limitation of metallization it occurs overheating during current movement at high temperature what happens sometimes we hear that uh, the ic is damaged because uh, there was some excessive heating and there was some uh, we can see that the ic is damaged only after we can see uh, it's 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 like hot and uh, we can touch it and feel that it's hot so what happens that sometimes due to overheating now that high amount of heat will destroy any circuit but even for smaller heat changes smaller heat variations power supply uh, moves to maximum so in those cases also even in those cases there is a chances of uh, ic damage because of overheating and this overheating process is responsible comes for only the metals because they have low uh, melting points so this is the basics integrated circuit fabrication is traditionally divided into two segments that follow one after another in the fabrication so first is front end of the line these wafers these refer to the fabrication of the active and passive elements of the circuit these are the resistors so see resistors means we can have the conductors as well capacitor diode transistor that make the various components and elements of ic so this is all front end back end of the line these are the metallic layers that are used to make interconnections between the various components fabricated in front end of the line and also the connections to the external devices so we have to uh, make a resistor we have to make connection now to a capacitor now we have to make connection with the diode so that is the within the device within the ic's uh, these are like connections within the ic's so you can say the various component in the ic now when we have to connect one transistor to the another transistor this is source drain gate this is source drain gate so in between the two transistors you have to make connections so this is you have to see there are metallic layers that used to make interconnection between various components fabricated in front end and also the connections for external devices so this is connections within this is external connections so external connections means one device to another and uh, within uh, means from one component to another component with increase in device complexity the separation of ic processing into two segment is also important in terms of device fabrication the current metallization in it in ic industry is based on copper so next big thing next big metal which is a deep defect forming silicon form, forming impurity in silicon thus copper contains copper contamination in silicon can destroy uh device functionality so by separating the fabrication of two segments it is possible to isolate silicon uh mainly with copper and prevent contamination so there are strict processes physical separation between uh, the copper and silicon so we can call it front end and back end so here we can see that this is uh, metals metals need a separation from remaining or rest of the silicon or the semiconductor so here just because we have to add metal or we have to go for metallization it is like increasing the device complexity because then as we talk about adding a metal we talk about uh, creating some separation we talk about uh, making some insulation between the metal and the semiconductor so all that uh, complexity gets increased there are a variety of techniques of depositing metal layers in an ic first is spattering next next is chemical paper deposition and then is electroplating so we have to see 
that what are these metals actually sputtering chemical vapor deposition and uh, this uh, electroplating so these are all our methods to deposit the metal layer means there are the three methods using which we can achieve metallization so when we want to deposit a metal on ic sometimes we use uh, sputtering sometimes we use chemical vapor deposition and we can also use electroplating so what happens in sputtering we have we create physical wafers uh, by we, we create physical vapor deposition process mainly used for aluminum sputtering of aluminum and aluminum based alloys and uh, here the chemical vapor deposition is an, again, another one step which is mainly used for polysilicon and uh, like we use in mosfets gates uh, to create grate in mosfet tungsten and sometimes we need buried layers between silicon and copper uh, also there is electroplating which is a chemical based process uh, using electroplating we can deposit uh, copper based uh, copper copper deposition which is metallization dual uh, dual damping process in which we can deposit copper so we will see the methods of we will see the methods of metallization preferably the, these two sputtering chemical vapor deposition and electroplating in my next lecture thank you